Game Shelf Tour. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. Hey there, welcome to our Game Shelf Tour. What you're seeing right here is where we display all of our Xbox games. So that's Xbox One, Xbox Series X, original Xbox, and Xbox 360. So why don't we go ahead and get started and we can go from left to right and uh, let's actually check out the top shelves first. Starting off, we have figures from a recent Bandai Namco sale and there's Cartman from Stick of Truth. And we have Batman, the trusted Big Daddy from Bioshock and Adam Jensen from Deus Ex. And here is a must-have for the 360 collection. You're in the movies with Vision Cam. We have a really cool Bioshock Collector's Edition from the UK. There's Alan Wake Limited Collector's Edition. And then a sealed Xbox 360 controller that we got old new. And then lastly, Dead Space Collector's Edition. So let's start off with the Xbox One. We haven't really talked about Xbox One a whole lot. But I pretty much started collecting for it in around 2014, 2015. So a couple of years after they released the consoles. And the games quickly became really cheap and it was easy to collect for. And I especially went after a lot of steelbooks. I thought they were awesome. And I also picked up a lot of these during Black Friday sales. So some of them are still sealed because I just never had to open them. I just hadn't gotten around to playing them yet. This collection has grown over time, but we haven't had as much to add to this section for the past few years. But it's still a great console to collect for, especially right now. I think most of these games have stayed relatively cheap. There are probably some rare ones in here that I'm sure we'll see as we go through the whole shelf. And also to protect them, we like to put like a plastic sleeve over the games. I think we bought them from Amazon. And then because we've moved houses quite a bit in the past, We started noticing that the game started getting very worn out and didn't travel too well in the boxes, but we've seen a huge improvement since then. By protecting them, they're now in way better condition than they used to be, and we're trying to preserve them as long as we can. Personally though, like I'm not a huge fan of the way that they downgraded the cases on the Xbox One and Series X. It's definitely a lot more fragile than something like the 360 or even the original Xbox, which was way more sturdy. But overall, try to take as good care of the games as possible, then also try to keep them, as you may have noticed, in alphabetical order. So we try to keep things organized, and there's really not much else uh, messing around with it. You know, it's easier to find the games that way, too. But overall, I, I really enjoy the Xbox One. I know I had a pretty rough start, but I still play it. A lot of the games are backwards compatible, so you can play it on the Xbox Series X. It didn't separate them out here, so there's no real difference in my opinion. You just uh, mix them all together and then they are displaying pretty much the same way. But as you may know with Xbox, they haven't exactly tried to make things less confusing with the naming convention over the years. So when you look at a game shelf and you see Xbox One or Xbox or 4 Series X uh, and what have you, it's, uh, it can get a little bit confusing, but yeah, you, you have to keep your tongue straight when you collect for this console for sure. So let's move on to the original Xbox. So as you can clearly see, this is a much smaller collection. We didn't really start collecting for this console until I would say a few years ago. So we try to go for the all killer, no filler, so to speak. We try to get as many classics as possible. And of course the ones that were Xbox exclusive. We're still working on this one, but these games fit very nicely on the shelf in the middle here. But we will definitely continue to collect for this console. Since I'm pretty much done with the 360, this will probably be my next project to fully focus on the original Xbox, and I in particular want to get all the horror games, which of course are some of the more expensive ones that you can find these days. Uh, but overall, I mean, this is a great console to collect for as well, and uh, so we definitely are looking to double, maybe even triple this one. And here we have this really cool Cuphead vinyl. We collect some of the game and vinyls as we see them, and uh, this was definitely one that we really wanted. Uh, I believe this one is from I Am 8-Bit, 
We have a record player and we love collecting the different game soundtracks on the vinyls and the artwork is amazing as well. So this is probably our most played vinyl alongside Stardew Valley, which we try to swap them around on the shelf because it breaks up kind of the look of the shelves too. Uh, and that's why we designed it this way so we can display them. And here's part of our treasured Xbox 360 collection. I started collecting for this console around the same time as the Xbox One. Uh, I saw an opportunity when everyone was sort of focused and distracted on the with the Xbox One and uh, a brand new console. I saw an opportunity to start collecting for this one and I have had zero regrets since then. It was the best decision because now these days people are scrambling to find all these games uh, for a good price. And the interesting thing is this is a very stripped down shelf because these are essentially most of the games that either are my favorite games or games I haven't played yet. So a lot of my other favorites and the rest of the collection are actually in boxes right now and ever since we had to, in a sense, downsize. The 360 collection is the biggest one, so I had to kind of put away some of them in storage. However, when we move into a new house, we definitely plan on making a really badass game room that we can store every single game and display every single copy that we have. So I guess this is more or less the start of something for the future, right? Like we have uh, aspirations to get a much better game room. So we, we really don't want games in boxes. We want to have them displayed and ready to pick up and play. And I might downsize this particular collection over time because they're not all classics, they're not all amazing games. Because I, I do play the games and I want to get all the achievements in them. And then I tend to trade them in or just sell them off uh, if I can get a good deal for it. But I try to keep as much in the collection as possible. If I only have one copy of it, I don't sell it. I want to keep it in the collection. But if there's a lot of stuff left over, I might curate that a little bit in the future. So when we keep moving down the shelves here, you know, try to get all games in a series, that's important as well. And over time, I started really getting into the Steelbook collecting on the Xbox 360 as well. Something I didn't really do until the Xbox One came around and it was a lot of focus on the Steelbooks. And then at the very bottom here, there's a little bit of room left over these are kind of where I put the recent pickups that I haven't cleaned up yet. Things like removing the stickers, checking the disc, testing the game, and all that stuff, right? All the good stuff that all collectors should really do. Just, you know, make sure you check all these things and clean them up because, you know, you want to make them look good on the shelves. Let's move on to the last section here, still sticking with the 360. This is kind of my pride and joy, really, because this is one of the main reasons I started collecting other than getting cheap games, you know, from GameStop and whatever else. These are a lot of the foreign variants from Japan, UK, Korea, Germany, and a few from Australia as well. So, yeah, I try to collect for these and also play them since they're just different versions of some of the games that I really enjoy. And I get to have a reason to play them twice. This is kind of where I store them, just so I can see more clearly which ones are the foreign variants that I have. So instead of having to sift through the collection on the right, I just go down here to the bottom, and then I know what I'm looking for immediately. So, that's pretty cool. I think these are really great to collect for. And every time we go to a foreign country that may have an Xbox variant that I'm looking for, I always check that out. Here we have our PlayStation and Nintendo games, all except for our Nintendo cartridge games. It's a pretty decent collection, but it is several different consoles fit onto these two shelves. At the top, we do have collectibles again, similar to our Xbox shelves. And at the very top here, we have Taiko Drum Master for the PS2. It's a larger box. I really don't know where to put it, but I want to make sure that we make a video of it soon, like showing how it all works. And it is the first Taiko Drum Master to come to the US. We have Rune Factory 3 that's still sealed. I haven't opened that one yet, so it's up here. Same thing with Ease 8. It's still sealed. So it's up here on display until I'm ready to open it. This chest here 
is for Persona 5. It was a royal edition. Has uh, tarot cards and some art for it and a steelbook too. It's a really cool collector's edition. On this top shelf we have another display of uh, we had this amiibo that we got recently in a play asia order here is a cool figure that i wanted that rumble actually found for me recently in a small game store super excited to have baldur's gate 3 limited edition rumble ordered this forever ago and we finally got it and i'm so excited that we have it in our collection Let's start with PS5. It's a smaller collection. We've just started this one, but I think it's really great where it started so far. And then it leads right into our PS4 library. The PS4, we've really been collecting, I'd say even more since the PS5 came out because games were really affordable on the PS4 for a while there, but I have started to see prices climb more recently. So, just kind of keeping an eye on that. Now I would almost say the PS5 games have come down quite a bit and that's why we've been collecting more for that. And this little guy here is from Soul Hackers too. Our PS3 collection, it's a decent size. I think that uh, it's another one that we're working on. There's several games we still want to add to this one. It also is still just one shelf at this time, but loving what we have so far. This little awkward shelf here is where we have some of our handhelds. We have our PS Vita, our PSP. This is a limited edition Shin Megami Tensei 3DS. And then this 3DS here has these like changeable cases that you can get for it, or I guess covers for it. I wanna find more. We have a little blank shelf here, just waiting for some more games. At least we have room to grow. <laughs> we have a small PS Vita collection. I think that's to be expected when games in the US for the PS Vita are so expensive. But at least we, we always try to grow it whenever we find something reasonably priced on the PS Vita. We have a smaller PS1 collection as well. This is the console I used to have several games for, but just for whatever reasons, I had to sell or trade those games in um, at the time. And now I'm trying to rebuild the PS1 library and just at least get my favorites back on it. PSP, I've noticed these games have actually started to come down more recently. So we've been collecting a little bit more for the PSP. And that collection's growing a bit. PS2, this is a collection, same thing, some that I definitely had to um, sell or trade in a long time ago, and now I've been working really hard to regain the classics or my favorites on this console. We have a lot of, I'd say some, yeah, rare games, definitely in our PS2 collection. This might be one of my more beloved collections. I have, um, yeah, the PS2 is kind of special to me and holds a lot of special memories for me. So I love collecting for the PS2. Up here, we start our Switch collection. We have a pretty decent sized Switch collection. I used to do a lot more collecting for the Switch, but I think now that prices seem to either just stay steady from where they are when they're first released or they even just start to go up, I find myself just collecting the exclusives on the Switch and not collecting the multi-platform games as much on the Switch. I do love having Switch steelbooks though. So whenever I can get a Switch steelbook, I like to get that because I just think they're unique and they're kind of cute as well. And also I just love steelbooks, but yeah, the Switch ones are definitely a little bit more unique. We have a mini Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance library. Love to add more to that, but at least we have a lot of the standards here. And then we have our GBA SP, our Game Boy Color, and the Super Mario and Legend of Zelda Game & Watches.
Down here we have our Nintendo DS library. I would say this is another console that if I find a good price on a game, I'll pick it up. But I think the DS games have been getting a little pricier, but I'm pretty happy with what we have in our DS library. So not a whole lot to add. I'd say the same thing for our 3DS library as well. Pretty happy with what we have here. Um, there's still some more games to add, but they are getting more expensive. You'll notice there's uh, several Japanese titles here, and that's just because in Japan, handheld games are just more plentiful and a lot more affordable. So whenever I see a game that never came over here, or maybe just a really rare game for here in Japan, I do try to pick it up. Our Wii U collection, I would just say is pretty solid. Like I feel like we have the ones that we want on it. Wii U was a little bit of a smaller library in general, but I think we have all the ones that I really would like to see on it, but I would love to hear any other game that you guys would suggest to pick up for the Wii U. The Wii is a fun console to collect for. It had a huge varied library. I find myself finding just a game for the Wii that I've never seen before at stores all the time. And I think that's why that one's been such fun to collect for. And anytime we can find like a horror game on the Wii, we definitely try to pick that up. And you see some Japanese titles here just because again, some that never came here. We have a super small GameCube library. That's just, you know, it's expensive here. And that's why we have all these Japanese GameCube games because they're just ones I wanted to have in the collection. Maybe they never came out over here or they're just rare. There's my little Amiibo, um, Amiibo card binder. There's a lot of Amiibo cards in there. On the bottom shelf here, just kind of some overstock, I guess, as a PS3 controller, just for if one of our PS3 controllers ever go bad, I want to have a backup of it. Mario Kart Wii. This is actually a sealed thing that we found at like a swap meet or a flea market, and it was a neat find for a really cheap price. And lastly, that's like my Goodwill finds that I just need to clean those up. They're not shelf ready. Well, thanks for joining us on this quick little game shelf tour of our collection. If you want to see more of our game collecting, check out this video right here. Thanks for watching and we'll see you all next time.